It is a privilege of the council to invite to the podium one of the top diplomats of the Hellenic Republic, an expert in many areas, including the Balkans, an impressive gentleman who took the time and energy to uh, celebrate the Independence Day of Greece with us here just recently. We're honored to have the ambassador here from Washington. We're delighted his wife joined us, and we would like to invite Ambassador Haris Lalakos to give us some remarks. Αγαπητοί συμπατριώτες, φίλοι και φίλες, χρόνια πολλά και ζήτω η Ελλάδα. As the Master of Ceremonies mentioned, the reason I'm here is because the Embassy of Greece in Washington decided to host this year's reception for the National Day, not in Washington, D.C., as it's customary, almost a routine, but in another place. And for many reasons, we thought that Los Angeles would be a good pick. And I think it was. It was in so many ways, and we were very fortunate to have the coincidence to have this event, the annual event of the uh, American Hellenic Council of California, so close to the reception, which took place Thursday evening. So when I was invited to stay for an additional day, I said, of course, and I'm very happy to be part of this celebration. This is a very dynamic city. This is a very dynamic state. And this is a very dynamic Greek community here. Even people out west, uh, east know about Hellenism in Los Angeles. They know names. They know the organization. They know their effectiveness. But not so many people from the embassy managed to come here, and that's not because of neglect, let me assure you of this. It's because of other practical reasons. So I'm glad that my trip here had not to be canceled due to last minute complications. I'm glad I spent three days here with my wife. I'm glad I had the opportunity to meet many people, both at the reception and tonight, and at the University of Southern California yesterday. Let me congratulate the American Hellenic Council for their work for so many years. The Honorary Consul General of Cyprus had a chance to brief me since the first day that we met, a couple of days ago, about the history of the Council, going back to a tragic year in our recent history, 1974. And he's from Cyprus, so for him, it's very close to his heart and his, uh, his place of origin. But the effort of this council is truly amazing. And it is a privilege for me to be here and acknowledge your efforts for so many decades. And let me please ask you to continue these efforts the way you're doing them in unity, with discretion, but with fervor in the cause. Let me also congratulate tonight's three honorees. I had the chance to briefly meet each and every one of them. I'd like to invite them and you all to Washington. When you're there, please drop by the embassy. Let us know that you're there and let us try to see what we can do together to further promote our cause in Washington, in the United States of America. Greece is an old country 
even the modern Greek state has been there as a modern state for longer than its neighbors. And our history, as you all know, has been tumultuous. Never a dull moment in Greek history, and certainly the present period is not an exception. You all follow our national issues closely. You all know that Greece is facing an increased aggressivity, an increased tension, mostly coming from our eastern big neighbor. And we see that this tension is not limited to our common border and the Sea of the Aegean, but also in Cyprus. We are not going to waver. We are trying to resolve issues diplomatically, but we maintain very strong armed forces. We value the support and the alliances that we have. And we are determined to defend our territory, our integrity, and our sovereignty. And we are also committed to be as close as we can and as helpful as we can to the Republic of Cyprus in their long quest for justice. I know that this council started as an association to defend Cyprus after the tragic invasion and occupation in 1974. It was very wise not to limit the activities of the Council to Cyprus, but to encompass the entire scope of Hellenism. But Cyprus does remain the number one priority for the nation, because we may be two countries, two different democratic republics. However, it's one nation. And we will not stop until we see a just and viable solution for the island. Also, thank you. I'm sure that all of you are following as closely as you can other diplomatic initiatives and negotiations that Greece is going through these days. We have been in negotiations with two of our northern neighbors in an effort to see if there is a common ground to resolve any pending issues between us and them. And the reason why we want to do it is because we believe in peace, peaceful coexistence with our neighbors, but without any discounts. So, these negotiations will be carried on until we reach a verdict, whether it is possible to find a mutually acceptable solution or not. There's absolutely no way that Greece is going to push to sign and accept a solution with which we do not agree. We will not accept any formula, any paper, which is not in our national interest. Because when you deal with foreign relations, when you deal with diplomacy, the guiding principle is the national interest. And this is our guiding principle and the bottom line. So if we see that we have something that we can sign, which is advantageous for our overall position in the neighborhood, which is troublesome, We'll do it. If not, no one will push us. We are grateful for the interest and the discreet role of the United States during these negotiations. We're in constant touch with American diplomats, the administration, and Congress in Washington. And we are very happy to see that vibrant organizations such as this council also maintain the same contact and the same interaction with local representatives, federal representatives, senators, and congresspeople who are in Washington. And we had a few with us today. I had the chance to meet one of them before, and we had met in Washington also. 
I was talking to one of the younger members of this council, and I was saying that in Washington, Greece is fighting a steep battle. Our budgetary constraints do not allow us for much in terms of lavish spending, like some of our neighbors. However, we have a big asset which they do not have, this. And this is replicated in every big and small city in the United States, the Hellenic American community, our diaspora. This is our lobby to Washington. This is our lobby everywhere in the United States, in the 50 states. And we are happy that Greeks, who are present in all states, even in the smallest towns, you'll find Greeks, they are there to remind elected representatives that we have certain issues that need to be addressed. And we have certain issues where our positions need to be supported. And they need to be supported because it's also in the interest of the United States to do so. Because at the end of the day, what Greece is seeking is peace, security, and stability for our region, which is a very volatile region, a very uncertain, unpredictable part of the world, which is going through a period of increased unpredictability and uncertainty. We know that our allies do not like to have this continued. We certainly don't like to have this as a permanent fixture near our borders. So we have a commonality of purpose and goals. And that's what forms a very strong foundation for our cooperation with this great country my host country, your country, the United States of America, and our country of our forefathers, Greece. Thank you very much.